In this video, we're going to demonstrate a simple uh, technique that uses CSS to take a list control that has been configured as a multi-select list control and add a checkbox in the first column to indicate that the uh, row has been selected. So the multi-select list box currently um, highlights the row that has been selected but doesn't have a checkbox like say a, a button list uh, uh, would have or a uh, checkbox control that has been configured to display as a button list. So we would like to make the button, uh, the, the list box control here behave more like a, a button list with this uh, checkbox control that uh, comes on and goes away. So currently we're using uh, a built-in check uh, check mark uh, image, but you can use uh, any image that you want. So first of all, to find the name of the built-in um, check mark image, I'm going to just go to uh, add a new control here, set the type to image only, go over to image name, go to built-in images in the filter, I'll just type in check and then I'll select that uh, image over there and then you can see that there's the name of the built-in image, so that's the syntax that we use to get the name of a built-in image, so I'm going to just copy that uh, to the clipboard and then delete that button control. So now what I'm going to do is next go over to the list properties. So here's my list w which has been configured right now to be a multi-select and I've set my multi-select mode to click. And Then I'm going to go to the list layout and you can see here's the first name field but I'm going to uh, customize the template for this field so you can see there at the end of this uh, template is the actual first name field and then before uh, the actual placeholder, I've got the image and over here for the image name, I'm using the name of the built-in image. And I've assigned this image a class called uh, check image and then I've also given it a margin uh, of minus two pixels and a right margin of uh, five pixels. That just helps me get the spacing between the uh, image and the first name field text uh, the way I want. But the key is this um, class name here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, actually go and uh, run this in Fire, uh, Firefox to point out one additional uh, factor. So I'm going to now uh, select this row there and now when I go and look at that row in Firebug what I'm going to see is that there's a um, class name that has been assigned to that row called iOS 7 list item selected. So this indicates that this is the class name that is used to indicate that we have a selected row. So if we were to go for example to the next row we can see that since that row is uh, not selected it doesn't have the selected class but if I click on it then it gets the selected class. So that's a key point to remember that um, selected rows have a class called list item selected with the uh, style name as a prefix. So now let's go back to the um, CSS definitions. So here we go. So here's our CSS definition and you can see we've defined um, a check image class and we've set the visibility to hidden. So that means that for every single row the um, uh, initially the uh, check image is hidden and so that little check mark is not shown. However, we've also defined a second um, <coughs> uh, set of selectors here. We've said that inside uh, this class if you see check image then set the visibility to visible. So that means on any row uh, that is inside a element that has the uh, iOS list item selected um, uh, class name, if you see a check image um, uh, rule, then set the visibility to visible. So that's basically how we cause the row to become visible, uh, the check mark to become visible on rows that have the uh, selected class name applied to them. Thanks very much for watching. This is an addendum to the previous video where we showed how you can define the CSS classes to show a uh, check mark on a row that was selected in a multi-select uh, list control. And when we showed how you create the CSS, we used um, this um, selector for the uh, selected rows. 
the problem with, with this is that this hard codes the name of the style iOS 7 uh, into the CSS. So if I now go and change my style from iOS 7, for example, to say Android Dark, and I go here and I click on the row, I'm not seeing my check mark. So let's go back now to the local CSS and instead of using a hard-coded style name there, let's use a placeholder. So dialog.style. And now when we uh, run this, we can see that we're getting the check mark. So now uh, when we change our style, we don't have to go and change the CSS. So let's go now and go back to say Android Lite now and go over to working preview and you can see that that's working correctly and when we go back to iOS 7 and then go over to working preview again it's working correctly so by using a placeholder in the uh, CSS that we write uh, and using dialog.style placeholder instead of the hard-coded style name we've made our component more portable thanks again